opening one, yeah. Good morning, good morning. Ah, you all come out of the woodwork, I love it, thanks. You waiting for sister? Do you wanna come sit, do you wanna join us? Or if you wanna sit there, that's fine too. And then you can inch your way up as you want, that's perfect. How are all of you this morning? Do you wanna sit by me? You can like be my assistant. I might have you help me hand something out later, does that sound like a deal? Okay, perfect. So, you all are doing well this morning, is that what I heard? Yes, you all recovered from your Easter festivities? Have you been enjoying the nice weather? Can I ask you any more questions in 30 seconds or less? No? Okay. So, last week we had some fun by, you know, cracking uh, an empty egg over my head. It was not a full egg, Pastor Jim. We would not do such crazy things like that here. Um, but, well, I care. <laughs> I care. But um, this morning I want to play a little bit of a game, and it's kind of like a two-part game, and I'll explain that in just a moment. Um, we've been throwing a lot of information at you with these different streams of baptism over the last week, or the, over the last uh, five weeks during Lent, and then we had Palm Sunday, and then Tattoo. Easter. You do have a tattoo. That's very nice. Thank you for showing it to me. It's looking like it's fading away a little bit, though. You'll just have to get another one. Um, but I thought it could be fun, especially on this second Sunday of Easter, coming off of the excitement of last week to continue the fun. Does that sound like a deal to all of you? Yes? Okay, have you heard of the game Two Truths and a Lie? Have you heard of that before? For those of you who have heard of it, would you like to explain it for those who have not? Lucy, you want to say what it is? Um, so you would have to say two truths and one lie, and the people would have to guess which one is the truth. Um, about yourself, right? So you're t saying two truths about yourself and one lie, and then the other people have to guess which one is the lie. So the part one of playing it is going to be that I'm going to give you the two truths and a lie about me today, and I'll tell you what your job is for next week later. But I want you to not say it out loud right away what you think the lie is, okay? I'm gonna say three things. One, I have really, really, really bad sunburn right now. Two, I know how to juggle. Three, I learned how to scuba dive on my honeymoon. Does anyone now think through those three things? I'll repeat them again. Really, really bad sunburn right now. <gasps> Thanks for joining us. What happened to your arm, friend? I mean, I can figure out that you broke it, but I'm so sorry. Oh. You've been through it this last week, huh? Oh my goodness. Well, I guess if you're playing two truths and a lie, you, if you say that you, know, you broke your arm, that one's probably gonna be a little obvious. So we'll wanna pick a different one for you for next week, okay? But I hope it feels better soon. Hey, what? Do you have a guess which one is the lie? She dropped on the scooter. She fell on her scooter. Any of you have a hunch which one is the lie? If you just had to take like a first guess of the three. So really, really bad sunburn. I can juggle, learn to scuba dive on my honeymoon. Frankie, what's your guess? You think I'm lying about being able to juggle, okay? Lucy. I got really bad sunburn. You think that's my lie? Okay. What do you think my lie is? Not sure. I don't know. You don't know? That's okay. Do you have a guess? No. I already told you you can't play. That's right. Sorry. Um, okay. Let's take the sunburn one first. Why do you think that's the lie? My skin's very glowy. Oh, thank you, Lucy. That's so <laughs> kind. It looks very glowy. Yeah, you don't see any sunburn on me right now, do you? No? It's looking. But I do have pants and a long sleeve shirt on. So you don't know. Okay? Um, you said that you don't think I can juggle. Why don't you think so? Why is that what you think the lie is? You, you just think I can't juggle. Fair enough. That's, that's fine. Any other guesses? Does anybody think I'm lying about the scuba diving one? Or we think that happened on my honeymoon? Okay, I promise you I'm not lying about all three. Only one of them is a lie. I promise. The lack of faith in your deacon is showing a little bit right now. That's okay. Okay, so how could we settle that which one is the lie today? How could I show you if I'm lying about any of those? I could show you like a picture certificate that I scuba dive, scuba dove, I don't know. Scuba Went underwater and scuba. Um, okay, so that's one thing. I could show you by juggling, right? All right, and what about the sunburn? Sophia's not moving. 
Here, come sit by me over here. I could do what? I could show you a picture of my sunburn. You also have the like physical human here with you. She could show you if she had sunburn, right? Would make some sense. So I'm asking you about this idea of needing to see something in order to know what happened because in today's gospel, we hear about one of the disciples, Thomas, who gets kind of a bad rap for being called a doubter, right? So the disciples are all together and the risen Jesus appears to all of them but Thomas. Thomas happens to not be there. And so they tell Thomas later when Jesus is no longer there, hey, Jesus was here. Jesus came back. He's risen. He's not in, you know, no longer in the tomb. And Thomas says, I don't believe you. And I'm not going to believe you unless I physically see the marks from the nails in Jesus' hands, feet, 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 and the uh, mark in his side. That's when I'll believe that he's really risen from the dead. Well, then Thomas has to wait a week, a whole week. It's not like it's immediate that you know, Jesus just appears again. And Jesus does do that. And when he comes, he does question Thomas's ability to need to be able to see in order to believe. But he doesn't do it in an unloving way because he recognizes that for us, sometimes in our walk of faith, we want to see things or to have like perfect proof and fact in front of us in order to be able to understand. But does that always happen in church or with things with God? Do we always get in our timing the exact evidence or proof that we need? No. So I'm going to do something that might seem a little mean. I'm not going to tell you which one is the lie until next week. Because if Thomas had to wait a week, I feel like you should have to wait a week too. But I will settle one of the truths. How's that? So you'll only go home knowing between two of them that one's the lie and one's the truth. And I think you're going to be pretty surprised because the one I'm going to reveal to you is my sunburn. That I purposely, uh-huh, they, they all said, huh? And it's like that on my legs too, but I'm not going to pull it. See? Proof? Do we see sunburn? Yes? Wear your sunscreen. That's the reminder that your deacon gives you today is when you go kayaking for an entire day, don't, uh, not wear sunscreen. So, now do we have a guess which one the lie or the truth is? Yeah. Which one do you think? You all, you th you all don't think I can juggle. Hmm. Okay. Okay. That's fine. You're allowed to have that. We'll maybe see next week. Maybe not, right? All right. Uh, let's have a quick prayer before you go back to your seats. And congregation, you're invited to join in as well. And I did purposely wear long sleeves just so I could do this children's sermon, just so you know. Okay. Dear, God, Dear God, thank you for the gift, thank you for the gift of, faith. of faith. Help us to remember, Help us to remember that, it okay to that it is okay to ask questions, that it is okay to have doubts, okay to have doubts. and that you will always walk beside us and prove to us that you really are with us. Amen. All right, friends, you may go back to your seats.